Hey guys, welcome to uh, Simple Can episode twenty six. I have the wonderful Rahul Subramanian with the N. Yes, thank, thank you. you, Kenny, for saying. Kenny is one of the few people who like pronounces my last name because correctly. for the longest time I thought it was Subramanian, mm-hmm. and then I realized it was N, and then I was pretty particular. I'll, I'll do it correctly. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, Rahul, the first Goa guest. Oh yeah, yeah. We are in Goa, guys. So I was very excited hmm. to have Rahul on the on the show. I was going to shoot you uh, in the hotel we were in for that project. Correct. After Akash, but I had a rule in Simple Game that the audience has to react to every episode. Uh-huh. I don't want to do like two episodes without uploading it. Yeah. Uh, we have questions from the audience. Right? Okay. Now what happens is it's very hard not to give advice. See, when there's a microphone in front of you huh. and there's cameras around, yeah. you feel like whatever you're saying has to be damn good. So we get into this uh, zone of the perfect answer, okay? Yeah. So you don't have to do that. I don't have to say things like, I mean, it depends. Yeah, yeah, that's very what annoying. What kind of person you are? Yeah, like, yeah. I'm just going to put myself in your shoes and give myself an advice. Yeah, because it's. Yeah. I don't think you can give advice for someone else's life. It doesn't apply to them, no matter how you frame yeah. it. Like uh, you had a very nice thing you said one day. I think someone was undermining. how easy it is to get views in india because we have numbers yeah. and you said a very sweet thing you said but isn't it also true that uh they someone is undermining my stuff and then you said but isn't it also true that uh, kenny had to choose such a different field exactly from a young age and navigate through it when yeah. it's not a very common thing mm. so i was like oh that's a nice Because you put me it's, in the perspective, like for you it was hard. Yeah. Don't admit, like don't say it's not hard for you. So yeah, it was hard. But I, if I look generally how hard other people's lives. Are. I think the problem is we uh, treat lucky and courage as two separate things. It's not. So you can feel lucky that you found courage. So that's you're feeling lucky. You don't know why you're feeling lucky. You feel like oh, I landed up being a stand-up comedian and at the right time. And I've I've, I've just had yes. one story, okay? Yeah. This is very and this this all Indian stand-up comedians have this one thing. Lot of them. They have this thing. They're like, ah, oh, this is nothing. We are like doing mediocre art. Real art is happening in the West, okay? And I don't buy this at all. I don't buy this at all because I'll tell you. So I was when I was in US. Uh, I was in Canada. I was doing a show. I did an. I went to an open mic with bunch of my friends, okay? And they were doing some open mic, and they were drunk. My friends. So they obviously they said, oh, he's also a comedian, which is I hate it. You know, I don't want to do that. I'm just there to see how the scene is. So we met those guys after. and one of them was talking and i was like it's like so how long have we been doing stand up i said i've been doing it for 4 years but well, a great great guy. where can i see your work i said i have a special on amazon prime video <laughs> he just spat his drink okay what he couldn't believe it because he's been doing it for 15 years okay oh. and it's like what and he i could see that he was he was little angry of inside course, yeah. he was like what i mean we've been doing it for 15 years. you know for us to even get a 30 minute spot it takes a lot you guys are damn lucky man he said you guys are damn lucky in 4 years you have a stand up special and i was like but you have roads <laughs> there's no pothole so you have you have <laughs> you overcome your free health care yeah. i mean come on you win some you lose some man so it how how much more difficult it is for an indian engineer who has also done mba like life is said for someone Yeah. That's why it's no surprise that Indian people in America do really well, because the obstacles are like laughable for them. Correct. They're like, oh, you want me to work four hours more? I thought I w- <laughs> I had to work four hours <laughs> more. Exactly. Yeah, you're right. We're also good at. No, I'm saying for ob- for the time we've invested. Objectively, of course, there are comedians who who have done amazing work. So, like, yeah. some my favorite comedians are not from India. Yeah. I mean, if yeah, I have I to rank of, them. Yeah. But that does not mean what we do here is anything lesser. And what we are doing at such a short span of time. Yeah. And considering our backgrounds, all of us to take this step itself, it's I think amazing. I think that undermining, like, just because such, like Sachin Tendulkar probably the best cricketer ever. But that doesn't mean if you are in Switzerland and you are selected for the national team, you don't play. 
because you know what sachin is much better no you're still you're the best here you do and, and every i mean my favorite comment is um i mean i read a lot of comments uh that this comedian's not good have you checked out dave chapel and, and uh, bilbo <laughs> i'm like by that logic you should walk into an it office look at one employee and be like have you seen steve jobs <laughs> it's like what are you doing yeah. so i'm like you can't compare us to yeah. the even in stand up itself they are legends yeah. it's not like they're good they're like unbelievably amazing okay. uh but obviously i think uh, people who say shit say shit can you you know i got a comment in one of my youtube videos <laughs> saying that uh, this is shit <laughs> dev shepel is much better <laughs> now okay i didn't i didn't get offended because yeah. it's almost like yeah i mean yeah. the fact that he even considered to compare me with dev shepel i thought i've reached a certain level with just that comment you know yeah. i was just feeling nice about it like okay it's between dev and me now all right so we'll come to our first question um ek minute can you how, how did you get these questions yeah so that's so that's why i said you know that the previous episode has to be uploaded or oh, then the last episode was the one year anniversary mm. of assemble again so they have questions in that video which is a question for this episode okay they have generic questions generic questions to so they don't the know guest. that they don't know that you are here. okay got it. so which is also interesting because uh yeah they want it's not a question you would get because it's not directed at you yeah. it's a general question so it's interesting so i also choose because i want to know what you think okay okay so okay. rishi prabhakar says so i asked him what are the themes that have because it was one year mm. what are the themes that i spoke about earlier that interested you or stuck with you so rishi prabhaka said i felt the episode you highlighted on men being feminine and emotional resonated with me the most mm-hmm. i've always been covertly insecure about my so called feminine qualities like i get moody and emotional and stuff mm-hmm. it is good to hear from you that not being manly for a man is completely okay and as we humans deserve to get our feelings uh, acknowledged and validated and it's not wrong at all that was my favorite question by the way this is very tough for me confess in public comment section thank you very much so the context wow. for this is i always considered myself to be very feminine mm. uh i think me going to the gym and working out was like a response to i oh okay. some level of being able to show i'm masculine huh. as well i like it though but i feel there's some motivation of defending myself mm. by coming as strong I can be feminine but if you mess with me I'll beat you up. I don't know. I think I do a lot of things that uh, I like I'm very touchy with my guy friends. Mm. As a joke, right? But a lot of guys genuinely don't like that joke. Huh. Like like I'll go kiss Kanan in the cheek and he he doesn't enjoy that. <laughs> Now he's fine. I do it cuz it's like you're not allowed to do that. Right? God, I know. That the joke is that hey, I'm doing something which I'm not allowed. Yeah. yeah. But then I've noticed how some women perceive me as being too feminine as okay which is unattractive because I think some women like masculine qualities like okay. very stoic yeah. deep voice mm. rugged mm-hmm. not clean shaven yeah so I was talking about that and it took again like I, all insecurities I grew out of it, it. accepted who I am yeah now it's an in thing of <laughs> it no, to be thing. sensitive yeah what is your outlook of being a guy or a man very very insecure about so i'll tell you things i was insecure about in school i was insecure about my height so i realized that whatever i was insecure about growing up i became very secure about it naturally and with because it's like no option no but a lot so, of people don't so reach that point where if they're insecure about something it stays for life yeah maybe there are a few things yeah. i don't I mean, it's not coming to me at this part of like i guess not height. many things <laughs> so height i was very insecure about i was insecure about the way i look huh. very insecure but i'm not good looking as compared to do you want us to say other, that you're extremely no no i'm cute? very no i'm very i'm, now very, you're, you're you're I'm secure. very very secure right now about about these things too. Yeah. so it's also very i could never get, i was i've never been in a physical fight apart from my with my own brother okay and and i used to because i get scared like when it comes to my hands don't move if You know, kids fight a lot. So yeah. I couldn't do that a lot, and that used to also bother me a lot because whenever there used to be a fight in school and stuff, Adab will be like, "Chalo, dekhte hain unko," you know. <laughs> and I had to do "Chalo, dekhte hain," but I couldn't. I was very scared because when it comes to confrontation, I wouldn't be able to do anything. So same here, bro. So and I wanted from inside me that I can do that. Now I'm very okay saying no. I don't want to fight. 
you fight mm. so i'm very very okay and i i like these qualities because i think it's more for me it was not about masculine feminine i've never i've not even tried to differentiate what comes where yeah i mean it's tricky and also yeah. you could offend someone by calling something feminine and masculine but you know what i mean right like i know what you mean placeholders for certain behaviors that are considered Correct. no i'm saying i didn't even give a thought about for me it was like these are things which are coming naturally to me yeah. and i am ashamed of them yeah and then after a point of time you know what these are things coming naturally to me i love them yeah so i think that shift happened in a lot of things and there are a few things which i am working on so irrespective of the question my advice to you <laughs> rishi is yeah, that uh, rishi. it's you so just yeah. i think it's a, it's a choice and it's very simple choice you have this you like it you don't like it just decide to like it and i think it, that's it what is your peak insecure age and what is your peak secure age okay there are a lot of things i'm still insecure about ah. so uh-huh. would you would you say right the- i am peak secure right now yeah and a peak insecure was when i was in 9th uh, 8th standard 9th standard that young oh yeah Oh, yeah. I was more insecure in my teenage. No, there was a phase, eighth standard to till the time I was say in engineering. So it was like from ah, same, same, same. Like it was a good, yeah. good amount. Yeah. So I, I never had. There was a, never a girl who had a crush on me. Things like this, you know. And then and everyone else had stories and stuff. I was the funny guy. Yeah. Funny guy is uh, is okay. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> You know what funny, funny funny guy is great just, if you are a professional comedian yeah being funny guy in general is actually very bad like <laughs> people mock you you get bullied 100% funny guy you're no, the funny guy yeah obviously course, i'm no. the funny guy luckily <laughs> i think i became less funny huh. after i became a pro- professional comedian Gosh. because i became so secure ha huh. like but when you <laughs> no one reassuring you you're funny yeah. you're you always funny trying. I told him the hoses were funny guy ka problem hai ki when you are the funny guy you are entertaining so when you are yeah so you make everyone laugh and then they go have sex with each other so it's a very you know, like this. so like you I, have to hold the crowd as long as possible so that you get maximum time with them yeah. before they fuck each other yeah. no one fucks you yeah, and, and exactly and so, so you create the mahal create and the everyone mahal. else is reaping the benefit but you know it you know you know that's your role and you still accept it because what is the other thing you don't even create the mahal that at least something <laughs> like something you have to get you know yeah. i that's so true because <laughs> sometimes in a comedy show hmm. a guy will come with his date and use the comedian to build the mall she laughs and often come and then he'll be like you're ready now let's go <laughs> like he doesn't do the hard work yeah. of m- making her laugh or light hearted and i'm like hey this is this is not allowed <laughs> that's that's almost like i take my date to a rich guy's house and be like isn't this amazing stuff come let's go come let's go <laughs> like i give you the feeling of yeah um i don't know if that's shallow mm. <laughs> uh but yeah so thank you rishi for bring that thanks up. rishi okay this is a little long actually before i forget so rahul's primarily comedy style is obviously crowd work right it's something you've leaned into more now not primary but right now i I'm, i'm leaning into that more now no so okay so i have uh, i love stand up as an art form of course, yeah. i love going on stage and making people laugh and whatever uh so i'll kal mai odega sa stand up special let's say stand up correct i have another stand up special which is what i worked on it's called is this even comedy but when i was about to tour that i was also doing green revolution ka open mics and that's when uh, they started something called as crowd work they were experimenting with formats and i did it and i enjoyed it and rohan desai and shrimoy the lovely producers yeah. from uh, green revolution they said rahul you have to do this as a one hour show you are very good at it you have to and the best thing is you enjoy yeah. doing it on stage also those two are so sweet at giving us that extra push that right. we don't have ourselves yeah yeah they're, yes, they're very good at it yeah. they're very they're very honest about it or they're great actors one of the two but it doesn't matter no but when they don't like something you know they don't like something yeah so that's when they like something i'm like okay you really mean it which is true because yeah. they've also said things like ye mujhe nahi pasand hai yeah. so so they push and you know what i just if you just feel as if wow you got another skill set like true and so it started from there and i just wanted to you know when you're doing something which you're good at or which you like doing and then suddenly someone gives you another option that you know what you can do this also Correct. the novelty of that is exciting yeah 
Because you can always do this. Yeah, it's but there. My, my stand-up special is there. Yeah. I'll come to it a little bit. Yeah. So that's why I started doing this crowd work. Yeah. And I enjoyed it a lot. So right now I'm in a phase. It's just a phase. So this crowd work will lead to a crowd work special on some platform. Who knows what? Who knows? Who knows? And then once it does, then I'll go back to doing my stand-up. So, it's, so right now I'm in that crowd work. This is the project I'm working on. Got it. So no matter what happens here. But I do stand up a yeah. lot, which is corporate shows, which is a different stand up I have yeah. only for oh, my corporate Oh, you're so good at audience. corporates also, man. It just... Um, That's not fair. You came from the corporate world, so you have a nice... Well. <laughs> well. You know, like, I remember <laughs> we had this conversation outside the office and we were walking and you had asked me, Kenny, I was thinking of quitting comedy, uh, quitting my job and doing comedy full time. And I was like, yeah, of course, man, you should do it. And uh, then I saw you a year or eight months later after you did that. And you you looked visibly happier, happier. and younger. Yeah. And uh, it was a... I keep bringing you up. Whenever I talk to someone, I said, Rahul is the example of a creative person who f- who was like not getting enough nutrients <laughs> to its soul. Because yeah. it, was, it was trapped in an office. Uh-huh. And now you're just like this completely different, happy, flourishing person. Because you every day you get to do what you love. Yeah, man. So it's insane. The fact that I can like I can't still believe that I can wake up <laughs> when I want. It is just amazing, Kenny. How many years did you had get up at a particular time? Five years of corporate life. Yeah. And before that, MBA, MBA, MBA was fun. Yeah. Then two years before that, so seven years in all. But last five years of corporate life, and not just five years. It's very important because last five years of corporate life was at a time when there is nothing else to look forward to. When I was working after my engineering, Cholo, I can do an MBA. There's yeah. something, there's the college life waiting. Yeah. Now there's nothing. Yeah. This is it. And I'm not saying it's bad. It depends on what you like. Yeah. But for me, I was feeling very, and I had no idea. I was feeling, this is, how I was feeling. This, this is the best. Every day was like, this, oh, I, I just didn't, uh, yeah, because I, I, as you said, it's not good or bad that you're in a nine to five job, but there are certain people who definitely shouldn't be doing it because they yeah. their their calling is somewhere else, mm-hmm. and there are some people who flourish in the routine. Yeah, I love how we we have become so over explanatory. The fact that it's very obvious when we said that, like no, dude, it's people not get like, pissed. <laughs> you know, what people I mean? get pissed, dude, people because get, uh, there was one time where I was praising doctors. And then there was another profession saying, you don't, nobody appreciates engineers. I said, no, no, no. I was only talking about doctors <laughs> that time. That doesn't mean that they are the most important. Yeah. Then when I spoke about how creativity is very hard, then I got comments saying, but people underestimate 95 people. Mm. So I did a whole episode about 95 people being great and routine takes work. And mm. it's nice to have, you know, a, a, such a nice life where yeah. you you have a lot of responsibilities. You can't like screw around. Mm. And you're a creative person, you screw around. But you have responsibilities. And then, uh, then they got another thing like, no, 95 people feel inferior because creative people are given so much compliments. So I feel like I'm dumb. Yeah. So I was like, okay. So that's why I explain. I, it's human thing, nature, no? Like, no, I'm saying just that it's, I know I did that too. You did, did that too. But I'm just like, it's so obvious that when you say <laughs> yeah. that uh, I was trapped in a nine to five job, does not mean nine to five job is bad. If that is what you think, then your uh, logical interpretation is, your logical interpretation is wrong. Which means you need to work on that. Yeah. <laughs> which is funnily one of the one of the things they test when they do a corporate interview. Yeah. <laughs> like they, they take your logical reasoning and yeah. apart from your technical skills. So I have uh, two more questions and then... Kenny, I'm having too much fun. If you're this. having fun, then great. I don't want to... Uh, okay, this question is a little long, so give me... A minute to read it. So it says, Purvi Sharma says, she says, Dear Ken, this first part, Purvi, I'm not going to cover now, uh, which is, what's your fondest memory with Abish, Kaniz and Kanan? How did your friendship start? Uh, so hey, I want to say, do you know I came for your first improv ever? As you guys as canvas? improvisers? No, in B flat. That was our first ever? Improv show of improvisers. Was it? I had done one open mic in yeah. my life yeah. and that's when I met Kenny because one Kanan. or two virgin, no I met Kenny uh, Kenny ne. I met Kenny's virgin yeah. pants okay? and I was just coming to Bangalore for work yeah. corporate work and, he came to and then I realized that you guys were doing that show and yeah. which was supposed to be your first I had not heard of Kenny till that point 
at all but the, I had long hair no then you had long yeah, hair yeah. and i had a kanan because of the movie reviews and yeah. abish because i had seen him perform in bombay Correct. canvas and so and i booked tickets and that was your first show <laughs> improv show and i laughed so much i don't remember anything from that but i just improv is such a hit and miss i'm glad you saw the good one cuz there are some days <laughs> Also, improv tickets are very expensive, and I feel very like I scammed so many people. We used to charge thousand bucks for an improv show, which is very expensive back in the day. And and I, only I feel like this. I don't uh-huh. think I think it was justified for other people, but uh, I think the audience liked it. But there were scenes which was bad, and my head I was like, "This is not a thousand bucks scene. <laughs> this is uh-huh. the audience deserves better than this." Anyway, so the question is also: You're a comedian, and you have a degree. uh of art and sculpture you believe that you have something interesting in you and uh will not require to do engineering or uh, mba and stuff to make sure that you can make a living on your own so you went ahead and experience a lot through the journey that you've been through to reach this level and you chose the path of your choice my question to you is the most of the teenagers are interested in entertainment industry can be dance comedy music drama and are generally not interested in studies because they think including me that we don't need it as we think we have talent i mean is it okay to not focus much on studies if we truly believe in ourselves wow or is it like we always have a backup plan as it takes a long journey and we might end up unsatisfied as not everyone reaches that level even after working really hard for years basically something that we always expect from ourselves Okay, mm. the reason I took this question. Wow. I get this question in different versions. I always bring it up. Our question I think is uh I knew that I wanted to do something different, so I didn't do engineering MBA. Mm. I did art and art and sculpture, which by the way didn't help me at all. It It's stand up. pushed you in a direction. It did, but the degree didn't do anything. Yeah, It yeah. was the people I met Correct. that influenced me. So the question is kids obviously are interested in entertainment industry. Do you think you can put studies on the sideline and focus on this wow so what i say is ha huh. most of the time you should not follow your dream okay yeah. wow most of the time most of the time you should not why no you have to get the basics done first but how do you define basics like get one degree okay. get one degree so do, you're defining having a degree as basic yeah just get an undergrad degree and then you and get a, get like a like a tangible skill and if you're really passionate about your dream then mm. you have to do both do the minimum sacrifice some parties and some sleep mm. and do the passion but not other way around mm. you can't only do passion because i feel like i'm so glad i did 11th and 12th science mm. it gave me a minimum level of smartness that a lot of artists who didn't finish the schooling don't have huh. i'm glad i went and did my four year degree because it taught me discipline mm. that even if i don't like something i have to finish it and uh it also in when you're in an art college i was lucky you talk to your seniors a lot mm. and it's a nice environment to be around people who are older than you to to mingle and they be like you do when first year i thought i was as the shit mm. and now i realize i have to pay for my brother or my family so just be a little responsible be perfect all these nice knickknacks you learn in these nice formative years and do off one job little bit just little mm. bit so that you appreciate how amazing uh because a lot of i mean this is my personal experience a lot of comics have met who have never had any corporate um experience are so bad mm. with timelines and so unprofessional because you have no one reminding you of the consequences of your actions which you only get from a system of an office yeah. or a corporate so experience that a little bit and then you can do art and you'll never feel insecure because if your art doesn't work you have tangible skills that'll give you a job mm. so that's like a better place to create mm. than this sheer panic of if this doesn't work on fuck and and that's not how you should create art okay create art in a nice place ki if it doesn't work i have a degree i yeah. can get become an accountant i'll get 20 grand at least 10 grand at least but if you have nothing and then if you're making art then you're not making art you you're but is in most like and the best art created by people who feel they've lost everything or there's nothing i feel that that that's also there but um, unless you i mean i'm saying if if your intention is to be the best at what you're doing you want to be the best yeah 
So no, like I lo- I read a lot of these articles about musicians who thought they could only write if they were high uh-huh. or if they were doing drugs or if they were in a place of pain, and how they themselves cleaned up mm. and got their lives together, and then realized that they can still create. Mm. That they realized that uh, torment doesn't have to create art. Yeah. Something like that's also there. Yeah, I like I like this perspective a lot. I yeah. think I, th- I th- like you talked about the musicians who thought this is the way to create, and then they re looked looked back at things and they felt little differently. Yeah, I think whatever you do, whatever you do, you can always you will always find some things to look back and say ki yar yes because whatever you have not experienced, yeah. you will feel like a part of you will feel like you have missed out on it. So I don't know what's the answer. I'm just I'm give, I have a different what will you tell Rahul yeah I'm just, I'm giving uh, so right so I did my engineering I did my MBA and now I'm a stand up comedian I have so much like Kumar Varun and me keep we keep talking about it how much gratitude we have for stand up so every now and then we are like you know what and that's why for us you know and KV is very much like me in that perspective like what if I don't get very popular what if my video does not go like we are very okay with it we are like dude we were in a ca- we were in a cubicle <laughs> planning marketing collaterals this is amazing you know we keep going back to that so nothing wrong with making <laughs> marketing collaterals yeah but we used to make it really <laughs> not the right way we were, i was very bad anyway the point is not that the point is that i always felt oh what if i had started doing stand up earlier that's there you know yeah. given a chance i would go back and start during my mba itself i would great place ready made audience ready made sound system everything is there every night i would do open mic all that is there you know i also feel that when i look back at all the things i studied in my school and college and i'm like you know what only if i had concentrated more because i think there was a lot of interesting things which i have which i don't know about so it's not about score it's not about whether i wanted to do do that for life or not it's not even about having a backup for me in like there were interesting things i missed out on anyways i was studying science anyway i was studying engineering i could have at least enjoyed that you know mm-hmm. there's so much like when we do quizzing with kumar varun i feel like an idiot i mean uh, we all feel like idiots and except because, uh, kv K- chakya and rohan and kanan yeah cuz they're passionate think, right yeah, yeah. they love it and knowledge is i think it's an amazing thing so i so wish like i had concentrated a little more not to score well or not to have a backup just to know stuff more mm-hmm. and i think lot of those things are interesting so if you are even if you're passionate about something and for whatever reason you have to also go to school or college when you are anyway there at least i mean enjoy that also you might oh. find a lot of interesting things like that's that's fun math and science are damn interesting they're not they're not boring they're boring only if there's a pressure to score you know and yeah. that you don't have if you want to become an artist right you don't want to be the best in that yeah. but at least enjoy that so i think yeah that's exactly true i mean you can choose to make the most of what you already have and not make that also painful no so you, you feel, have you to feel f- bad later i'm yeah. saying you will feel bad yaar yeah, why don't i know in, why don't why don't i know what is integration used for i make jokes on that but i'm like you know i studied integration i knew the formula and i have no idea why it is used i my, my biggest regret is not doing maths properly hai na yeah it, like it really affects has everything. it affected your uh, stand up life no it, no but I feel like people who were very good at math naturally went into coding and when you go into coding no you have like a wonderful way of looking at life it's kind of like when you start playing chess uh-huh. you start looking at things differently yeah you start you start asking questions like why did that person do that which is a, a mm. key aspect of playing chess mm. key forget about your move why did they do that move correct so it leaks into your life all these coder friends i have they were very like Everything is just something that is not been solved yet. Beautiful. Like that's how they look at things. So that's possibilities. Yeah, and I feel like coding kind of rewires your brain like that. Mm. So I feel like maths uh I, I I'm not as entrepreneurial because I get overwhelmed by numbers. Mm. But I'm like it's not that hard also. Yeah. I'm saying it is interesting. Yeah. Like there are a lot of interesting things which we don't do even though we are not doing anything else at that point of time. Yeah. So maybe it, So this is the last question. Okay. Ever, ever on, ever asked by human is by Manya Sharma. She says uh, the answer that really changed the way I see certain things was when you said that being 
good in talking to people is a skill that we can learn like learning a guitar or an instrument uh-huh. i being an introvert myself really face this problem almost daily but now i remember what you said i realize i can be pretty good at making conversation when the situation requires and i don't have to constrain myself mm. and you can give an example of um sorry give an example of some study on comedians and how they can perform really well on stage and be really different off stage so this is a really cool study i read that yeah. comedians are the only people they have studied that can genuinely behave like an extroverted person on stage and and also genuinely be introverted yeah but they are not extroverted but when they are they are genuinely extroverted mm. the closest person that comes to comedians is actors they were studying why comedians have a higher rate of stress and whatever and actors seem pretty chill compared to comedians mm. and one key thing was actors have a sense of community mm. that if the movie did well our movie did well if the movie didn't do ba- uh, badly our movie did badly oh. but a comedian does well it's him if if he failed he failed or she failed and uh, but actors yeah. in general are extroverted wow well comedians can genuinely flip between both which is it is too long the things mm, but that's interesting it's quite cool mm. so i mean what uh, she's talking about manya is that i think what annoys me is when i think it came from my art college huh my art college was a good prep to the comedy scene where all the stereotypes of comedians are there in my art college mm. there's the artist ki any other type of art is bad anything that's popular is bad mm. this is not understood by anybody except few people so it's good it's amazing and if you try to sell it you are a sell out there right. was the artist mm. just a comedian like that also comedians are like that. there was another comedian who was like are do what works yeah so she used to do splatter work uh-huh. like this half heartedly do splatter paint sell them for 20 grand dude <laughs> and it was piss all of us all of us <laughs> off cuz she was quite bad at painting <laughs> But she's so smart. She's like people like this platter thing. So, so give it a, to them. Give what give what audience wants. Yeah. Is one. There was um there was a um I'm just uh, doing this because I like it. Mm. But don't give me feedback. Uh, and then I and then I saw the artist that was struggling to pay rent, was couldn't afford the college fees. But when I said, why don't you sell your paintings? And mm. said, that's not my job. My job is to create, not to sell. Hmm. So, and and um, I was saying that me- some sometimes I meet a comedian and I say, hey, you need to put videos more huh. if you want to sell tickets because you seem upset that your tickets are not selling. And they said like, but I don't know. I I'm a comedian. I don't. I'm not a filmmaker. I'm not a content creator. Hmm. Yeah. So I'm like, learn it. Yeah. It's like no, but my identity is this. How can I become content creator? I said your identity is nothing. It's not. <laughs> you won't stop being a comedian if you're a content. But what's the other option? You want to you like? No, I am a comedian. Huh. I am not a content creator. I want to sell tickets, but I don't want to put up videos. Yeah. I don't want to learn put making videos. Yeah. So I want to keep saying how things I think are not right. I think it's the dwelling in the situation that's fun. Mm. No, but what's it? So you're not looking for a no. Solution? I don't think it's purposefully done. I don't think it's like. No, no but I'm saying at some point when you look back at what you're saying, like you just try to evaluate. Maybe like, it's it's a it's a long way of saying it's hard. I don't want to do it. Like for example, if you want to lose weight and you really want to lose weight, and then I say, okay, you have to stop having any animal products, then you're like, and you still have animal products. Yeah. It's not like you don't want to lose weight. Yeah. But it's just very hard. But, but I can't. Then that, I think yeah. people are. I think then they're okay with things being hard. N- At yeah, some point. Yeah. No. But I'm. Some, like, but it's constantly upsetting you. So. So the, there's okay, a. Okay. No, I'm saying they're okay with being constantly up, maybe. upset. Maybe. Because if at some point you will anywhere, you will take action if it's upsetting you. Or no. I, no. no surprisingly, okay. people don't. Like for example, okay. it came from um, an introvert saying that. I'm bad at talking to people, but I'm an introvert. Mm. And I said, no, you don't have to change who you are to. If you just want to talk to people, that's very easy. It's like a skill. It's not unaccessible because you're an introvert. Yeah. So, but ha, so okay, maybe not the right analogy. Yeah. I one of the insecurities I had growing up was there were these boys like 
the the guitar boys this man i hate could, them who could sing They're well the first, man. and uh, you know they could like basketball players for some reason Tall if you're a football player it's not as attractive as you're like basketball players are tall guys no not just that it looks it looks fun it looks cool like at the school level and college level basketball is a much more fun sport to watch correct than a football okay so i was like i used to always like i want to play the guitar i want to learn i would but i used to never put that effort to learn so i wanted to be someone who knows to get i but i didn't want to go through the process of learning i just wanted to jump to i already know the guitar <laughs> So at that point of time I know why I didn't learn the guitar yeah. because although I would have loved to the effort that I had to put for that was not worth it in my head right so I think then I will I kept cribbing about how I don't know how to play the guitar then I start saying how the these guitar boys are not because poor boys they have put in effort but now I'm like if I am not learning <laughs> let this them no that's that's what happens but I think at but there are things that I really wanted to learn I did put in an effort. Yeah. So I think it I how think how much how much shit I got do it in the beginning when I used to bring the guitar I used to get shit for being able to act also. <laughs> so this can he just act out acts out is I can learn how to act. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would shit we get for for the skills you worked on. Yeah, but you know the moment you 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 just don't get affected by what people are and you just enjoy also like yeah. so like यार कहीं तो सब जगह गिटार लेके आ जाता हाँ ना मैं तो सब जगह गिटार लेके आ जाता हूँ मैं तो गिटार ही बजाता हूँ इजी है इफ यू से दैट ना दे डोंट नो हाउ टू रिस्पॉन्ड ए बट आई स्टिल अफेक्ट्स मेरे नहीं बट नाउ इट्स बेटर बट या आई आई जस्ट कून अंडरस्टैंड देन इट टुक मी अ लॉन्ग टाइम दैट पीपल सी शिट बिकॉज इट्स लीक सम समथिंग इज गोइंग ऑन इन देयर हेड एंड समथिंग कम्स आउट ऑफ देयर माउथ आई हैव टू बी लाइक बट व्हाई इज दिस सेइंग दिस डू दे नॉट लाइक मी एम आई शुड आई रीलुक माय वर्क बट देन आई रियलाइज दैट The Lord should I say that so some somewhere it's coming correct and you shouldn't read into it yeah like even editing i we have had this discussion at least Three, four times, and we were like, "It's a Rahul. It's not tough. Learn." <laughs> Because I always go to Kenny. Kenny, how do I make videos? I have ideas, and but but I don't know. My phone is not. My camera is not good. It's lighting, is, and you'll be like, "It's not that tough to learn. Just buy these equipment, equipment, and you'll learn it." Yeah. I will not. I'm not doing it. I still feel <laughs> I'm not doing it. But I know why I'm not doing it. It's not because I feel that it's why should I do it? It's because I don't want to put in the effort. That's yeah. the. This, I'll have some joke, and I'll ask Kanan. What do you think of the punchline? Mm-hmm. Kind of like I don't. I don't think this is the best one you can think of. Mm-hmm. I'm like, sure, sure. He's like, why don't you write five <laughs> and then choose the best one? I was like, if I could write five, <laughs> I would not come. Yeah. So it's like everyone just uh, pushing yourself to do better is a little irritating. <laughs> it's very irritating. I mean, why? Why you guys should have been in just doing a corporate job right now. Yeah. Anyway, so that brings us to the end of episode twenty six. With Raul Subramanian, this show actually is available in the audio format, so it's on uh, any audio platform that plays podcasts, uh, except Seashells uh, on the sea sh- seashore. But it's on it's on Ghana and Apple and Google and any any places. Look for it; it'll be there. If it's not there, let us know. Uh, we might do something about it. And thank you for your questions. That's what makes the episode. So please write your questions, or you can just put it on the Instagram page. Which is simple can podcast. Just put your questions there, so I don't have to read like a lot of comments, and I'll miss out your question. Uh, yeah, guys, thank you. Hope you had a good weeks, and uh, let's give a lovely thank you to Rahul Subramanian. Thanks, thank you, Kenny. I had a great time. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for coming here, dude. That uh, you're welcome, but thanks for having me too. I had I had a good time. I wish this didn't end. This was a no. This was a no. You know why I ended at this point? Why? Like one voice tells me that. We are talking because we want to talk. Ah. At this after point where we are like, I want this to continue, but I'm actually done talking. Why I stopped the part, <laughs> the whole uh, live thing. Same. This, yeah. This this also happened. Like, are we just talking because we are talking? We like the talking. moment if, where the thought even comes. He like it should be so organic that we're not even uh, aware that time is passing, and uh, she always leaves some from wanting some more. You know. I think. Okay anyway guys I'll just say bye now.